Hi guys, welcome to homework 9-1. Let's jump right to it. Um, the first problem, we have a is 6x squared plus uh, 4x minus 10, and b is uh, 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. So, what we have to do in this case, um, the first step, they're asking us to add a and b together. So, I'm just going to write this out. Okay? I'm going to put parentheses around a. And then put a plus sign, replace b with what b is. So 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. Okay. Now remember, once you do this, um, you can drop the parentheses. Okay. The reason we put the parentheses in the first place will be more apparent in the next problem. But notice we have a plus sign there. So all we need to do is just combine like terms. So I have 6x squared and 3x squared. Remember, we keep the x squared term, we just add the coefficients, so 6 plus 3 is 9, that will be 9x squared. Now do a different shape, let me do a circle around the x term, find the other term with x in it. So now I have plus 4x minus 2x, and that will be 4 minus 2, which is 2, and we leave the x alone. Now finally, we have the minus 10 plus 5. So we're going to do minus negative 10 plus 5, which gives us negative 5. Okay? And that'll be your final answer. Now, a minus b, we're going to use the parentheses again. We're actually going to do the same thing we did before. The difference in this case is that we have a minus sign in between. Now, what we have to be careful about is when you have a minus sign outside the parentheses, you need to distribute the negative sign to every single term. And theoretically, all we're doing is just changing the sign. Um, so I'm going to rewrite out the first one, dropping the parentheses. And we're going to change the negative. We're going to uh, bring that over to each one. Okay. So it'll be minus 3x squared. This is a negative 2x, so it's going to become positive 2x and the positive 5 will become negative 5. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before, combine like terms. I'm going to put an under, I'm going to underline the x term, x squared term. Underline that one, the negative 3x squared. So 6 minus 3 is 3, and we're going to leave the x squared term alone. Don't add or subtract them. Okay. Now the next step, we're going to do... 4x and 2x, so 4x plus 2x is 6x. Okay. And finally, we're going to do minus 10 minus 5, which gives us negative 15. Okay. And that will be our final answer. Okay? Now, let's go on to the second part, which is multiplying just two binomials together. Now, what's Essential in this case is that you remember our little trick, the your favorite type of aluminum, which is aluminum foil. So, if you want to remember it, it this way, okay. you can use foil only if you're multiplying two binomials together. Um, you know, otherwise we're gonna have to use the other trick, which is well, I'll show you in a minute. In number three, so we're gonna do the first x times x, which gives us x squared. The outside, which would be x and negative 5, which gives us negative 5x. The inside, 4 times x, which is positive 4x. And the last, which is positive 4 times negative 5, which gives us negative 20. Now, remember, you can always combine these two middle terms when you're multiplying two binomials together. You got x squared is going to stay there. Then we're going to combine negative 5x plus 4x, which gives us negative 1x, or just negative x. And finally we have negative 20 at the end. Okay, so the next step after this, uh, the next problem, we have 3x plus 10 times 4x minus 5. This is very similar to what we just did. You do the first. The 3x times 4x gives us 12x squared. Okay. 
And then we're going to do the outer to 3x times negative 5, which gives us negative 15x. Then we're going to do the inside. Four, 10 times 4x gives us positive 40x. And finally, the last ones will give us 10 times negative 5, which is negative 50. We're going to combine the middle terms. So we're going to rewrite out the first one, so 12x squared. And negative 15 plus 40 gives us positive uh, 25 and we're going to leave the x and we have to put negative 50 back at the end. Okay, okay let's take a look at the last one. Now, before you do this problem, we have 5x plus 3 times 5x minus 3. Notice, this is going to be the same number. We have 5x and 3 and we have a positive in the first one, negative in the second one. So if you remember the trick, you'll see it in a second. So, we're going to do the first 5x times 5x gives us 25x squared. The inside gives us 3 times 5x, which is, oh wow, sorry, I skipped the outside. So 5x times negative 3 gives us negative 15x. The inside gives us positive 15x. And 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Now, when we combine the middle terms, what's going to happen is we have negative 15 plus 15x. I'm oh, sorry, negative 15x plus 15x, so it will cancel out. So we're just left with two terms, 25x squared. This will become 0 minus 9. Okay? So this always happens when we have um, the same numbers and same terms, just with different signs. Okay? Alright, let's take a look at the next problem on the bottom. Now, this is when we get a little bit more complicated. Okay? So in A, we have 3x minus 4 squared. A lot of times you guys want to distribute the squared, but that would be wrong. So what we need to do, remember, the squared just means you're going to multiply something by itself. So this we have to rewrite as 3x plus minus 4 times 3x minus 4. And then you go back and using your FOIL method. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Okay. The outside, 3x times negative 4 is negative 12x. Okay. The inside is negative 12x as well. And the last, negative 4 times negative 4 is plus 16. So we have 9x squared minus 24x plus 16. Okay. Now, in this next problem, this is where we're not multiplying by two binomials. Okay? So what we have to do in this case, we can't use FOIL, because FOIL only deals with the four terms. So what we have to use is the distributive property. Basically, you're going to take this each term and multiply it by the other, um, the other, the product, the, sorry, um, you're going to take each term and multiply it by everything in the other um, thing you're multiplying by. So in this case, I'm going to take x squared, multiply it by x. Okay? So x squared times x is x cubed. And then you're going to do x squared times negative 2. You get negative 2x squared. Okay? Now notice we multiply this by two of them. Okay? So we're going to move on to the next one. Negative 4 times x. So that will be negative 4x squared. Then we have negative 4 times 2 okay. would be positive 8x. Okay. Now, what's going to happen? We have to do the 5. I'm going to do it on top this time. So 5 times x is positive 5x. And 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And I apologize, I'm running into the other problem. So, what we have to do here, from this point, we're going to combine like terms. The x cubed, there are no other x cubed terms, so I'm going to write down x cubed. And finally, I have negative 2x and negative 4x squared. Negative 2x squared minus uh, 4x squared. So when you add negative 2 minus uh, 4, you're going to get negative 6x squared. Okay. Now finally, I have 
positive 8x and positive 5x, positive 13x. And finally we have this guy at the end, negative 10, so it would be negative 10. Now, something to remember um, before we continue on. Once you get to this point, um, to get to this point, we have three terms in the first one and two in the second. Okay? So to make sure you did everything correctly, do three times two, that gives us six. We should have six different uh, terms before we combine like terms. And if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, we got that right. Okay. Now let's take a look at C. I'm going to rewrite C down here so we can write it. I'll probably fix it before I copy your homework. Okay. okay. Now in C, we have x squared. I'm sorry, we have x. We're going to multiply it by x squared, so we get x cubed. And we're going to do x times negative 4, which gives us negative 4x squared. And then we're going to do x times negative 3, so it'll be negative 3x. Finally, we next up, we do negative 3 times x squared gives us negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times negative 4x gives us positive 12x. And negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Okay. Now double check we have 2 and 3 so 2 times 3 is 6. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. So we're good. Now let's combine like terms. x cubed is going to be by itself. Okay. And then we're going to have the x squared here and the x squared there. So negative 4x squared minus 3x squared gives us negative 7x squared. Then we have negative 3 plus 12x. Negative 3x plus 12x gives us positive 9x. Okay. And then finally, we have plus 9. Okay. okay. Um, notice it's a little bit different than FOIL in both B and C. But it's essentially the same thing. FOIL just gives us, when you have two binomials, you're going to have four terms. Same thing with the um, when you multiply a binomial by a trinomial. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the next thing. Next problem. Now we're jumping into the word problem. These aren't that difficult. It's just you have to sort of stop and think a lot. So Peter's creating a garden, a rectangular garden, that has a length of x squared minus 4x plus 5 and a width of 4x minus 3. So let's just draw the garden real quick. Okay. The length is x squared minus 4x plus 5, okay, and the width is 4x minus 3. Okay. The first step wants us to determine how much bigger is the length than the width. So what we need to do is just subtract the two. Okay. We're going to do x squared minus 4x plus 5 okay, minus 4x minus 3. We're going to distribute the negative sign. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 5 minus 4x plus 3. Now we can combine like terms. I have nothing with the x squared. Okay. So that's going to stay there. And then we have minus 4x minus 4x, which will give us negative 8x. And finally, we have positive 5 plus 3 gives us positive 8. And that will be the difference between the length and the width. Okay. Now find the perimeter of the garden. Now a perimeter is basically how much fence do we need to go all the way around. Now notice, I only have two sides. But if you remember, in a rectangle, opposite sides are equal. So this one's going to be x squared minus 4x plus 5 because it's a length as well. This one's going to be 4x minus 3 because that's a width as well. Now all you need to do is combine all four terms. So x squared minus 4x plus 5 plus 4x minus 3 plus x squared minus 4x plus 5 plus 4x minus 3. So we have all four terms. And you can, you can put parentheses around it. Not necessarily when you're adding, but it's just as good. 
So, in this case, okay, let's combine like terms. I have x squared and x squared. So we're going to have 2x squared. Okay. Now the next term, I have negative 4x plus 4x minus 4x plus 4x. So negative 4 plus 4 minus 4 plus 4 will give us 0. So they all actually cancel out. Now finally, we have plus 5 minus 3 plus 5 minus 3. If you do that in your calculator, 5 plus minus 3 is 2, plus 5 is 7, minus 3 is 4. So it'll end up being plus 4. Okay. Now, to find the area of the garden, we need to remember what the area of a rectangle is. The area of a rectangle is length times width. Oh, look at that. They gave us the length is x squared minus 4x plus 5, and the width is 4x minus 3. Okay. Now, we're going to take the x squared, I'm going to multiply it across to each one of these, so I get x squared times 4x is 4x to the third power. x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. Now we have negative 4x times 4x is negative 16x squared. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12x. Now we have the 5. We have plus 5 times 4x gives us plus 20x. 5x times negative 3 is negative 15. Now all we need to do is combine like terms. I have no other cubed terms, so I'm going to leave that alone. So 4x cubed. Then we have negative 3x squared minus 16x squared, which will give us negative 19x squared. We have positive 12 plus 20x gives us positive 32x. And finally the last one, negative 15 can go with no one. And this will be our final answer for the area. Okay, now let's take a look at number 5. Molly manufactures coat for a company. The company pays her based on the number of coats X she makes. The revenue is represented by the function R of X equals 3X squared plus 5X minus 10. And the cost of making X coats at her factory is C of X equals 2X squared minus 3X plus 6. Determine her profit by subtracting the cost from the revenue. So basically, the cost, this is true to be true in every single problem that deals with profit. You take the amount of money that's coming in and you subtract the money that's going, that it's costing to make stuff. So, there's a lot of words here, but realistically all we're doing is just doing R of X minus C of X to figure out what the profit is. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to do R of X is 3X squared plus 5X minus 10 minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 6. And the key thing with this, by the way, is to make sure that you are putting parentheses around this whenever you're subtracting. Okay? So when you subtract, you need to change the sign of the second um, thing you're subtracting. So, I'm now going to drop the parentheses in the first one because there's no minus sign in front. Now you're going to subtract everything on the inside, so we have negative 2x squared plus 3x minus 6. Okay. Now we're going to combine like terms. So negative 3x squared minus 2x squared is just x squared. Okay. Uh, plus 5x plus 3x is 8x. Negative 10x minus 6x is negative 16. Sorry, negative 10 minus 6, no x, is negative 16. And that'll be your final answer. Okay, now let's take a look at number 6. This is going to be factoring. We're going to start factoring. We are going to actually continue doing this all week um, next week. So just make sure you understand the basics. Now in this case, all we're going to do to factor this, just using the LCD, is to look at the numbers that are in front and find the GCF. Okay, you have 3, 
12 and 6. Notice what number is divisible by um, each, sorry, what number can divide evenly into each one of these. Take the smallest, 3. Is that divisible by these? Yes. So we're going to end up pulling a 3 out. Now, in terms of um, the x's, always take the smallest number of x's. I have 3 x's there, 2 x's there, and 1 x there. So we're going to be able to pull out this x as well. Now, take a look here. Do you have 3 divided by 3 is 1. Okay. And then we have x to the third power, but we're taking one of those guys, so we're going to take an x. Okay. Now, we're taking one of the x's, so we're going to end up with just two of them. Now we have 12, with 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay. I'm going to keep the minus sign there. I have two x's, I'm taking one of them. So we'll have one x there. Now finally, I have a 6 divided by 3, which gives me 2. And this one only had 1x, so we're taking that 1x, we don't have to put anything there. And to make this a little prettier, I wouldn't have put the 1 there. Okay. But it's always a good idea just to put it first, and then you can get rid of it in your final answer. Okay? Now, let's take a look at B. We have 10x to the 5th power minus 15x to the 4th power plus 25x to the 3rd power. Now, taking a look at the numbers, you have to figure out the LCD. Take the smallest one, 10. Hmm, what, can I divide 15 by 10 evenly? No. Okay, so, and 25 by 10 doesn't work either. So, what's a number divisible by 10? You know, if I need to, we can write out a little chart. 1 times 10, 2 times 5. Does, does 5 go in evenly into each one of these? Yes. Okay. So we're going to actually pull out the 5. And then also taking a look at the smallest number of x's, I have a 3 over here, 3 x's over here, so I can pull 3 of them out of there. So now, 10 divided by 5 gives us 2. I have 5 x's, I'm taking 3 of them, so we're going to be left with x squared. Okay. Now I have 15, 15 divided by 5 is 3. I'm taking three of the x's, I have four of them, so I'm going to have one left over. And finally, the last one, I have 25 divided by 5, so that's going to be 5. And then I have three x's, they're all being taken out, so I'm not going to put any x's there. And the key thing with both these problems, by the way, is even if you're factoring out an LCD, you should not be able to combine any like terms afterwards. Okay? If you couldn't do it in the original, you shouldn't be able to do it in the final answer. Okay, so if you do find yourself, double check your work, find yourself being able to combine like terms afterwards, double check to make sure you didn't mess up. Okay, um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask during class. Okay, have a nice night. Bye.